Stephen Golub is a political analyst and also a lawyer. He's now joining us from California. Stephen Golub, good to see you and welcome to the show. This is indeed an unending problem, almost like an epidemic for the United States. What's the problem? Why do presidents and their administrations find it very hard to stem it? Well, you're absolutely right to say it's an unending problem that's transcended different presidents and uh, administrations. A fundamental problem goes back to, in the case of Venezuela, that it's a horribly mismanaged country uh, with a repressive government that has crushed whatever democracy it had years ago. And on top of that, has mismanaged the economy of a country which is very rich in oil, which should be able to provide decent lives and livelihoods for its people. So these people are fleeing a horrible situation to undergo a horrible trek up north for those who can make it. And now President Biden, it's his turn to try to weigh the balance between humanitarian considerations of sheltering these people and, on the other hand, trying to secure our border. It's, it's a job none of us would want to have, decisions none of us would want to have to make. Stephen, let's talk about Trump's fence. Do you think, besides the politics mm -hmm. that surrounded it, the fence could have actually done something? Absolutely not. The fence was a joke, and that's putting it politely. When Donald Trump ran for president in 2016, he promised not only that he built an impenetrable fence, but that the Mexican government would pay for it. He did not build much of a fence. To the extent he did build it, it was not effective at blocking migrants from coming in. It also went hand in hand with some very inhumane policies he had of separating children from their parents at the border. And to top it all off, this claim that the Mexican government would, would pay for this so-called partly built ineffective fence ended up being false as well. So no, it would not have made a difference. Stephen, finally, we are talking about uh, people who are moving in buses, who are moving in trains, who are now moving uh, on the sea to get to the United States. What can the United States do to protect these migrants? Well, it's very difficult for it to do anything. It could, do two, it could try to do two things, both of them very incomplete steps. One is once people get here, it can provide some shelter. And also in the case of, of Venezuelans, President Biden just approved allowing them to work here, at least temporarily, the 450,000 or so Venezuelans who are already here. In terms of protecting them along the way, those who are trying to make the trek north to the United States, maybe the best thing to do is to try to discourage them from coming because they're not necessarily going to make it, and they may not be welcome here by the time they get here due to our specific state's policies and maybe reversal, potential reversals in our national government's policies. In the long run, the cure is to try to improve the conditions back in the countries they come from, in this case, Venezuela. But the U.S. has tried to do that, and we're still stuck with a very, as I said, corrupt, uh, repressive uh, government that's thoroughly mismanaged what should be a fairly wealthy economy. All right. This is an unending, an unending topic, and uh, we could talk for hours about it. I've been talking to yeah. Stephen Golub. He's a political analyst and lawyer. Stephen, as always, thank you for giving us time today. Thanks for having me. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.